Enrico Federer isn't around and these two are facing off for the first time since the 2021 French Open. Now, more than the quarterfinal, is this an occasion to savour as we just don't know how long we will be getting these contests at Grand Slams or at any level with injuries sort of now dictating appearances? Vicky, I cannot agree with you more. It's a matchup made in heaven. And uh, what more can a tennis fan really want? A Djokovic Nadal clash for the 59th time in their history. And uh, it's just the most exciting uh, evening ahead at the French Open. Sadly, it had to happen in the quarterfinals. We'd like it to have been in a semi final or a final of a Grand Slam. That's the only sort of negative that has not worked with the, with the draw falling through like the way it did. But otherwise, it's a matchup made in heaven, and uh, every single tennis. Aficionado around the world cannot wait for this match to begin. Yes, we all had our eyes on the draw and when this game came up, you sort of waited to see if both would get there. But, you know, heading into a match like this, Rico, you look for small advantages. Have the French Open authorities sort of handed Djokovic an advantage by scheduling this game in the evening despite Nadal's reluctance? He spoke about how the conditions are very different when you play at night. I think now... What the French officials have done have given uh, Djokovic a probably a 51-49 edge. Because, uh, like, like Nadal said, he doesn't like enjoying playing at night because of the heavy conditions and the spin of the ball, uh, the, whatever, the revolutions get a lot less. And uh, with heavier the conditions, the ball start of st uh, much slower conditions on the court. But I think uh, at the end of the day, he owns Philippe Chartrier. So, Rafael Nadal... 13 times French Open winner. He's only lost to two people on that court in, in, in I think, 16 or 17 years. Uh, it's going to be a 50-50 match, you know. Uh, it's very, very difficult to separate the two. If you look at their Grand Slam record, you know, it's always been uh, edged to Nadal. He leads 17-10. So, over five set matches, Nadal definitely has the edge on Djokovic if you're looking at stats. But, you know, leading up to this, uh, to this quarterfinal, a couple of things that I've noticed. One is the rhetoric coming out from both camps. One is the Djokovic camp seems to be a little more confident than the Nadal camp. They keep talking about he's playing his best tennis. You know, he, he had the perfect preparation. He won the Italian. Then post that, the lead-up matches, he played an outstanding match against Schwarzman. He was really good on that day. And he's not had much match time, you know, so he's been nice and fresh. And from what's coming out from the Nadal camp is, is this could, you know, is the fact that he's not played enough, he's not had a, the, the perfect preparation on the clay court season. So I think uh, those are the only negatives I can think of. Otherwise, you know, I tell you, you got to throw stats out of a window when these two guys play each other. It's 50-50, the better guy wins on the day. Okay, 50-50 you say, but initially you did say 51-49 to Djokovic. Let's see how this one pans out. But uh, looking at it from a Djokovic angle, Rico, Nadal profits from his absence at the Australian to win that elusive 21st title. Djokovic, Federer still on 20. There is probably more at stake here than just a semi-final berth at the French Open. Yes, and uh, considering the draw seems to have opened up, except for Alcaraz, who's probably looking at certainty to reach the semi-final, the bottom half seems very open with Medvedev for, uh, losing early and Sissipas out of the draw. So really, there's a lot more at stake than what it was even, say, 48 hours ago. So yes, I think the pressure will be on Djokovic. There's no doubt about that. Well, Nadal's already achieved that 21st. So the pressure will definitely be on Djokovic. And definitely playing on the back of his mind, Diggy. Let him not pretend and keep saying, you know, he's not even before that during the US Open, that 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 strange happening when he got, when he was, uh, uh, what, what he was uh, defaulted for hitting a ball boy. There's a lot of pressure every time he plays a Grand Slam nowadays because this is his main goal. His main goal is to get that record of being the highest Grand Slam winner. And it hurts him more than any of the other two guys, I believe. You know, because there were concerns over Djokovic's form as well, you know, because he had barely played any tennis till the start of the European clay court season. He'd played what? He was kicked out of the Australian. He played one event in Dubai, which was an early exit, and then sort of his season came together at, at Monte Carlo. Uh, but he seems to have found the rhythm that Nadal doesn't. Would you say that he is the outright favourite in this contest? One word answer, yes. Because, like you said, you, you've given all the factors. There's nothing more to add. 
you know, he's had the perfect preparation and the Nadal has not. But then, like I said, the only plus point is that Nadal owns Philip Chatrier. You know, it's his, it's his court. And when you got to beat him, he's not, he's not going to go down. He's going to, you have to take him down. You have to take him down and put him into the dust. He's going to be fighting right to the last point. That's always sort of proved difficult, Rico. But I'm going to make you earn your appearance fee. From a coaching perspective, uh, you are Nadal's coach for this match. What does he need to do to beat Novak Djokovic? I think one very, very important part of how he's going to beat Djokovic, I think he's going to need a very high percentage of first serves. Because what happens, what I've been noticing a little bit in the last couple of matches of uh, Nadal, that his second serve has been hanging quite a bit. Not as, you know, deep and placed as well as he normally does. And uh, even Ali Asim was able to tee off on them and, you know, dominate the point. So I really believe first serve, that first shot after the first serve is going to be very, very crucial But how he dominates the, the rally. Because if you allow Djokovic to start dominating the rallies, and uh, Nadal will only be sort of chasing the balls on the baseline. It'll become very, very difficult for him. So very high percentage of first serves for sure. And definitely where he strikes that first ball in a rally is going to be extremely important to dictate the rally if possible. Okay, you've told us how Nadal needs to beat Djokovic, but now put yourself in Goran Ivanisevic's shoes. How does Djokovic beat Nadal and avoid the sort of hammerings that he sort of received over the years? Uh, I think the most important part of the Djokovic game is his backhand down the line. And if that's working, because that, that shot really opens up the court because that goes deep to the Nadal backhand and that really forces Nadal to get, to get defensive and it takes away Nadal's forehand. So the key to uh, Djokovic's game will be done definitely. He must serve well because that's absolutely key. And second of all, that backhand down the line to Nadal's backhand, it has to be very, very accurate. It can't be in the middle of the court. Because if it's in the middle of the court, you know Nadal's going to run around and dictate with his forehand. So key really is the way he places that backhand down the line every single time he goes and strokes it. You know, Rico, I'm just going to go back to something you mentioned a short while back. Normally, when you win a marquee contest like this, it makes you a favourite for the title. But then there is either Carlos Alcaraz or Alexander Zverev waiting next. Does this half of the draw give us a men's champion? If you look at what's happened in the lower half with uh, Medvedev and Sitsipas crashing out. Yes, I'll have to tend to agree with you, Diggy. I think the top half is definitely looking very top-heavy. What I've seen so far is it's been pretty incredible watching this young Alcaraz play. I've never seen a guy so perfect, you know. He's got the perfect game. Great serve, great second serve. And he's got everything. He's got great ground strokes. He's as comfortable at the net. He volleys as well as anybody else. He stays aggressive. You know, he's, he's the real deal and, you know, he's in the top half and he's on a huge role right now. Terribly confident at the moment. I saw the two sets, it was very late at night, I saw the two sets of the demolition of Kashanov the other night. It was very, very impressive. And, you know, I've, I haven't seen a guy move as well as he does in a very, very long time. So, he's the real deal. So, really the top half, I'm not sure, totally convinced that the winner of this match will actually win the title. From the bottom side, that young Danish guy has been very, very impressive, Rune. I watched him beat Shapovalov in the first round. And I remember telling my wife right after that match, it was late. And I said to her, Samira, look out. This guy is the next big deal in, in, in men's tennis. And uh, for the simple reason is, you know, he served for the match. He didn't hold serve. And then he was mentally strong enough to actually come out and win it after that. So kudos to the guy. He's a really, really exciting prospect. I don't think whether, you see, the only advantage really the winner of this match will have is the fact that they're playing a slam and it's the best of five set match. And whether these youngsters are able to keep that level for five sets, that's going to be very, very important. And, I, you know, therefore, you know, if it was a three set match, an ATP event, you can always say, yes, you got a much better shot. But in the five sets to beat a Nadal or a, or a Djokovic is, 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 is a tougher job. Yes, we saw that also in the Australian Open final with Nadal coming back from the dead against Medvedev. On that uh, note, Enrico Piperno, thank you for your insights. Let's uh, strap ourselves in, enjoy the 59th occasion that these two legends will do battle against each other. Hopefully, we get a contest and we will have you back on Wednesday to reflect on this result.